Okay, welcome to the Crestron Independent Study Lighting Tutorial. So first thing we're going to do is open Visual Studio and open our project that we had before. So I'm going to open this project. Okay, so the logic for the lighting is actually very easy. All we need to do is import the lighting namespace. So go up here using crestron.simple sharp pro dot lighting. Oops, lighting. Great, so that's done. We're gonna add that reference to the solution. Hit OK. Perfect. So now we can declare the lighting model that we have. So in our case for this class, we got a GLPP1DIMFLV3CNPM lighting controller. So I'm going to declare one of those here. So I'm going to go private glpp one TIMFLV 3C NPM. We're going to call it lighting. Perfect. And now we are going to, similar before, we're going to initialize the lighting um, object and we're going to register it just like our other devices. So if we come down here, we're going to do lighting equals new. So the constructor takes two arguments. It takes the Kresnet ID, but this is in hex. Um, and we need to convert it to decimal. Um, and then it takes the control system. And since we're in control system.cs, we'll just pass it this. So our second argument is going to be this. But our first argument is the Crestnet ID, which is given to us in hex in toolbox as decimal. So to find that, we need to open toolbox. I'm going to hit the I. We are going to select USB as our device. So we're going to look at our Kresnet devices and it looks like we have the lighting controller here and it's uh, hex value is A4. So we can close this. So 164 in decimal is A4 in hex. So we're going to pass that here. And we'll also make a note here that 164 is A4 in decimal notation. Okay. Now we're going to register. And now we can write our logic. So for the lighting, we're going to do it slightly differently. If I open the touch panel here, We can see that our particular model of touch panel has a lighting button on the side and we have found that these five buttons are mapped to digital one, two, three, four, and five automatically, hence why we started projector on at six for the previous tutorial. Um, so we're going to map our lighting to three and we're going to make it a toggle. So I'm going to close this. So to do that, we are going to declare a button in our global variables here. I'm going to call this our light lighting state because it's not like we're using two buttons. One for on, one for off. We're using one button for the current state. So we're going to call that lighting state button equals three. 
perfect. And that's it for global variables. So now we can go down here and we can write our logic. So lighting, oops. Oops, need else if, don't we? And then, <clears throat> so now we're just checking if the lighting state changed in that logic. So if the lighting state got changed, we are going to follow this logic here. And this should be called a toggle. So if the lighting state was changed and if our current value is true, which means it's on, we're going to shut it off. So we need to access the array. So we're going to do lighting state button dot bool value equals true. So if the lights are currently on, we're going to shut them off. So we're going to go like this. We're going to paste this set it to false and again similar to the last tutorial we don't need to well we do need to set this um, value here um, so that we know what the current state is so we know how to change the lighting itself so um, before this line we're going to do lighting dot set loads off so storing the value isn't a matter of if we have more than one touch panel like up here we didn't need to do that up here if we only have one touch panel but in this case we do need to store the value regardless of how many touch panels we have because we're using our state button to, to toggle, and so we need to know the new value. So we can easily paste this in here. And if it's false, well, actually, we don't even need an else if. We just do else. So if the lighting state changed, and if the current state is true, we turn the lights off and set it to false. Else, we set the loads to on. We turn the lights on and set the value to true. That's loads full on, I believe. Yeah, save. So this is a pretty simple logic here. So we don't need to modify our VT project because we're using the button on the side of the touch panel. All we need to do is compile and upload this code to the processor. So we'll build that and upload. Okay, perfect. Close that. We'll input our IP, I believe it's 14. Cool. And now, hopefully, we can see that the lights turn on and off. 
so that concludes the lighting tutorial for Crestron Independent Study uh, three, CS390 at Kelvin University.